60 years ago, when Raphael Lemkin helped to write the Genocide Convention, he did not have the internet. In Darfur, we have the power to save lives. Or its ability to mobilize so many. Not on our watch. To speak out so strongly. One more time. Now, genocide has its own grassroots movement. Holocaust survivor Elie Wiesel says it has put genocide on the political agenda. No other tragedy since 1945 has caught the imagination of so many people as Darfur has. Eric Reeves is one of the fathers of the movement, a professor of English at Smith College. Reeves is a self-made expert on Sudan. He runs a one-man war room, even while fighting his own five-year battle against leukemia. People like me, anger cartoon, I've definitely gotten under their skin. Reeves was one of the first activists to call Darfur genocide early in 2004. I thought that I was creating a moment in which a debate would take place, a debate about what to do. What will we do? When the answer came, it was a sobering reminder that the UN is powerless to force its members to act, even in the face of mass murder. So after four years of UN resolutions, there is still no end to this crisis. There was no lack of information. There was no lack of understanding. There was a lack of will to stop genocide. Year after year after year. In 2004, Darfur was finally on the agenda. A Security Council resolution demanded that Sudan disarm the militias attacking the villages. But it issued no ultimatum to back up that demand, not even a trade embargo if Sudan refused. The main spoiler was China, one of five countries on the Security Council with veto power. China has major construction contracts in Sudan. It buys oil from Sudan, and it sells Sudan its weapons. And at every point, China has said no sanctions against Khartoum. None. Sudan said sanctions were unnecessary because it would punish anyone who committed crimes against civilians. But after two more years of death and destruction, the Security Council voted in 2006 for a peacekeeping force. This time, China went along, as long as the UN invited Sudan's consent. That was the phrase that China purchased with its threat of a veto. That invitation was declined. Outraged, Reeves and other activists, including actress Mia Farrow, began putting the squeeze on China by calling the Beijing Olympics the Genocide Olympics. I said, this is the phrase that will hurt China. This is the phrase that will get to China. China could not escape the beating from human rights groups, from the press, and from President Bush. My administration has called these actions by their rightful name, genocide. Under pressure, China now leaned on Sudan. And in July 2007, a year before the Olympic Games, Sudan finally agreed to a UN force. 26,000 soldiers and police. But after all that, a year into the mission, the force is less than half strength. And Darfur has descended into near anarchy. Bandits routinely hijack UN food convoys. UN patrols are ambushed. Peacekeepers are stripped of their weapons and even killed. Despite all this, Eric Reeves believes the unprecedented grassroots protests have not been in vain. Without the outrage by American advocacy, we'd be looking at hundreds of thousands of additional deaths. The prosecutor at the International Criminal Court has charged Sudan's president with genocide. This was the president's defiant response. Why, 14 years after Rwanda, 60 years after the Genocide Convention, 
has the world's response in Darfur been so little, so late? That's the question I didn't ask myself forcefully enough, and I can only play uh, foolishness. When we come back, forgiveness for unspeakable crimes. You looked her in the eye, and what did you say to her? A remarkable meeting in Rwanda between this woman and one of the men who killed her family.